about The Last Jedi! My lovely, lovely imps, it is time for me to review The Last Jedi at long last. I have been going through, for those of you who are new to my Star Wars reviews, I have been going through and talking about all of the Star Wars movies. I decided a couple of months ago that I was just going to go through. I was going to start with the prequels, and I was going to go all the way through the sequels, and then I'm going to watch a bunch of the TV shows and play a bunch of the Star Wars games. We're calling it the Star Wars arc, and it's been actually really, really, really fun so far, and a lot of people have really liked my Star Wars reviews. They've prompted a lot of interesting conversation because I'm super political, so I like to talk about the politics and the whatever going on inside these movies and inside the pop culture phenomenon around them. I've reviewed all of the prequels up on my channel. I've, I've gone through the OG uh, trilogy, which are up on my channel. Well, most of them have posted. We're still waiting for some of them to get posted as videos. And now we've caught all the way up to the sequel trilogy. So today we're going to talk about The Last Jedi. That's right. If you are interested and you're having fun so far, smack that like button and make sure you subscribe so you can catch all the other videos because these reviews have been really, really fun and I would love to have you as one of my amazing imps. Now, without any further ado, let's talk about The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is an interesting film. Boy, is it an interesting film. We just talked about The Force Awakens the other day and I had I had a lot of negative things to say about The Force Awakens, but I also had a decent amount of positive things to say about The Force Awakens. The Last Jedi was directed and written by Ryan Johnson, right? It was directed and written by him, right? Let me just make sure I got that correct. It was directed by Ryan Johnson and it was written by... Yeah, it was written by him, right? Am I wrong? I just want to make sure. Yeah, written by Ryan Johnson. Yep. Now, some of you may know Ryan Johnson as one of the most famous TV writers of recent memory. He wrote some of the most iconic and award-winning episodes of a little show called Breaking Bad. Uh, he also uh, uh, wrote and directed uh, a a series of very popular films called Knives Out. Um, Rianne Johnson? No, it's, I think it's Ryan. I think it's pronounced Ryan. Uh, and Ryan Johnson is a bit of a polarizing figure in some ways. A lot of people really, really love his stuff, and a bunch of other people really don't like his stuff. Um, and... I think I think part of the reason for that is that he has a very specific sense of humor uh, he, that some people might describe as Reddit. And it is true. He does have a little bit of a Redditor sense of humor. Um, I, I'm going to be a little honest about that. Um, however, I actually quite like Ryan Johnson, even though I generally roast Reddit-style humor. Um, and uh, Ryan Johnson, I was actually very excited when I first heard that Ryan Johnson was going to be uh, was was going to be making a Star Wars film. And it seemed like he was incredibly passionate about it, and that one of the things he really wanted to do was give uh, the new sequels a real sense of personality that was distinct from the OG trilogy and the prequels. And uh, if, if you'll remember, I, when I just talked about The Force Awakens, one of my biggest complaints was the fact that it got completely hijacked by soy nostalgia. As in, like, completely hijacked. The, 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 char the new characters who were introduced in The Force Awakens, Rey and Finn and Poe and BB-8, all got overshadowed by Han Solo and Chewie and Leia and Luke and R2-D2 and, and Chewbacca. Wait, I already said Chewbacca. It was, it was a really, it was, it, it's really unfortunate. And it was very unfortunate. So I was very excited to hear that Ryan Johnson was going to try and take 
the sequels and give them their own stance, their own position, their own feeling. Now, originally, Ryan Johnson was going to do uh, the next two movies. He was going to do The Last Jedi, and then he was also going to do uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker, which is the third movie, which we'll get to. Don't bait me into talking about Rise of Skywalker. Don't bait me into it. We're going to get there, I promise. I know you all are looking forward to the Rise of Skywalker review because my god, that is going to be that is going to be the most complex and the longest one that I do for sure. Um but uh regardless. Uh Rise of Skywalker is the worst of the nine movies. It's the worst Star Wars movie, hands down. Rise of Skywalker is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But let's not get there. Let's not, let's not do it. I can't do it. I can't. Okay, let's get there. The Last Jedi, okay? Um, the Last Jedi had a lot of controversy around it when it first came out. And <laughs> let me tell you, uh... Remember how I also mentioned that there was a bunch of weird conservative outrage around The Force Awakens because they had a, a character, they had a main character who was a black guy and they had a main character who was a woman and uh, they had a main character who was, um, you know, a, a, a Latino guy. Remember how I said there was a bunch of really weird people? It got even weirder in The Last Jedi to the degree that it started to get deranged because... Um, not only, I mean, they couldn't really blame Ryan Johnson for introducing these characters because he didn't write those characters. He wasn't involved with the first film. Instead, they started doing this weird mental gymnastics where they basically tried to say that Ryan Johnson was trying to wokenize uh, the the series and that he was like departing from the vision that had been laid out by the writers of the first film. It was one of the dumbest and strangest things I've ever seen. And one of the things that they fixated on is uh, is this character right here. I'm gonna show you what she looks like, okay? Uh, played by the incredible, incredibly talented Laura Dern right here, Admiral Holdo, okay? Now, uh, Admiral Holdo uh, is a perfectly fine character. Um, she's great, uh, she looks good, she's a great actress, she's totally fine. They had a complete and utter meltdown about Admiral Holdo because one of the storylines was basically that Poe Dameron, a character from the first movie, the hotshot, arrogant pilot, that's his personality as established in the first movie is that he's an arrogant, hotshot pilot, behaves like an arrogant, hotshot pilot, and actually uh, uh, gets himself in some trouble. And Admiral Holdo uh, gets mad at him. And in the minds of the conservatives who were very angry at this movie, they believed that this was supposed to be like a hyper-feminist message about how men are bad and women can be leaders too. And that's just insane, okay? It's just actually insane to, that they would, and they did say this, like, like a lot, okay? Um, they were like, the purple-haired SJW, she, she had to put the men in their place, when that's not even close to what actually happened in the movie at all. It's wild. Now, of course, uh, Admiral Holdo was not uh, the only character that got a lot of shit. The other character that got an incredible... Um, amount of shit was this character, a character by the name of Rose Tico, played by Kelly Marie Tran. And I bet you can guess right away why people got really, really mad about her. Um, it's because she's Asian and a woman. And when I say they got so mad that it was like daily there were these Star Wars conservative channels 
that were just churning out videos about how she was the worst thing that had ever happened. And she was a side character. It's, it was insane, okay? You guys need to understand how insane the discourse around The Last Jedi actually was. It was nonstop. She got so much harassment, it's actually insane. And, the, and there's two reasons why I'm bringing this up. Uh, th because when we talk about Rise of Skywalker, this is going to be, you all need to remember this. Put this in your mind. Put a little bookmark in your head. Remember that I talked about this character, Rose Tico, uh, in advance. Because it's going to be relevant when we come back to Rise of Skywalker. Okay? So... I just wanted to put that out there, that the the conversation, the political real world conversation around The Last Jedi was actually deranged. Um, and uh, the movie itself was highly polarizing. A lot of people uh, really, really liked The Last Jedi and a lot of people really, really hated it. Um, and it was actually once again, it seemed to be pr a pretty political division that uh, that people who weren't obsessed with women in movies and weren't obsessed with, uh, 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 you know, uh, race, uh, anybody who's not white being in a movie, um, that those, those people tended to like the movie just fine. And the people who tended to be very angry about the movie were very angry about SJWs and uh, and all this type of stuff. And as a result, it's, it was very difficult to, to parse through a critique of this movie. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, I really do think that this movie deserves critique and I'm going to be doing some critique some pretty heavy critique of The Last Jedi here. And, uh, uh, and it might be fresh to some people because for a long time, the only people who were digging into this movie, uh, who were like really hard critiquing the movie, were doing so because SJW Admiral, uh, Asian character, uh, woman character. Okay? Now, let's talk about the movie itself. Poe Dameron should have been killed by firing line. Okay? Let me just let me just be clear, okay? I I need you to understand this. A uh, gay fesh who watched the movie with me can tell you that uh, I actually said that during the viewing of the movie. That's the first thing I needed to say is that in that movie, Poe Dameron should have been killed by firing line, okay? Poe Dameron is arguably a villain in this movie. <laughs> It was so bad. He was, he got so many people killed. He got so, him personally got almost the entire rebellion because of his personal actions, got almost the entire rebellion erased from existence. Thousands of people killed, uh, dozens of ships completely obliterated and knocked out of the sky, specifically uh, because he was he made such foolish decisions. And while some people might argue that it wasn't uh, the best writing for his character, I would in fact argue that it pushed, it beggared belief uh, that they had a main character behave so badly and not really have a serious arc because he didn't. He just basically got away with it. Um, but he, but in my opinion, uh, The Last Jedi basically made Poe out to be a terrible person. And I don't know, and he never got any actual, um, he never got any actual, uh, 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 he didn't actually really get any, uh, any uh, character growth from that. He never had any character growth from the fact that his personal decisions, his, uh, his willingness to engage in highly risky, uh, behavior personally ensured that a ton of people died. 
Um, it's one of the biggest things that I never hear mentioned about this film's writing, and one of the biggest flaws in the film is that Poe Dameron in this movie just sucks. He's just a horrible, horrible person, and that there were, it was never resolved. Now, I imagine that it was probably going to be resolved, but I'm not 100% sure, because at the end of the movie, everyone's kind of just on good terms with Poe. The very beginning, when the decision he made in the beginning to continue the bombing run is fine. At the beginning of the film, he makes a decision to disobey an order and go forward with a bombing run to take down a, uh, a, a very valuable empire target. That is something that you can imagine is forgivable. A lot of people died as a result of that attack, but it was, it was his genuine belief and he made a foolish call. But later on in the film, he, he actually defects and he gives information that directly leads to the Empire being able to, uh, to completely obliterate the, the entire rebel presence and nearly gets, all, gets two of their leaders killed. That's the order he gets punished for, the first one. So, hold on, let me explain this. Let me explain how it happens, okay? Yeah, he leads a literal mutiny, and then uh, uh, he leads a mutiny so that, uh, so that Rose, his co-conspirators, Rose and Finn, can go to a planet where they unintentionally recruit an Imperial spy the Imperial spy, who is then able to, as a result of their actions, uh, hack into and compromise the security of uh, of the um, rebel fleet, which results in them being unable to escape. The, the plan that they have, which would have allowed for a lot of them to survive and take cover on Crate, is, uh, is, is undone directly because of the actions of Poe Dameron. Which is why I was saying um, that Poe Dameron actually does deserve, like he does, he deserved to be he deserved to be executed by blaster, okay? And they just they just didn't they just they just kind of let it go. He wasn't a spy; he was a mercenary that went for gold. That's that's completely not the point. DJ isn't an imperial spy. He rats them out after returning his payment, meaning he was pay he wasn't paid, so he got his money. Don't join. Um, I don't. Ag an imperial spy can be anybody who spies for the empire. So, uh, uh, no, I don't agree with that interpretation. He decides. He doesn't get paid by the rebels because Poe decides to fucking run a mutiny. And instead, he decides to spy on behalf of the Empire. And he gives em the Empire, the he gives the he gives Admiral Hux uh, the information necessary to know that they're sneakily escaping uh, the ships down to Crate. It, it literally Poe's mutiny directly leads to the to the uh, the targeting and explosion of basically unshielded rebel transports. The only reason he did that was because Holdo wouldn't tell anyone her plan, so everyone naturally thinks she's just going to fly until they until they die and do nothing. Yeah, but that's stupid. And also, it's bad writing. This is one of the parts where this movie has really bad writing. Because actually, it's not true. We know that Holdo did tell her plan to other people. Yeah, and also, yes, exactly, as Alora brings up, why would Holdo even tell Poe in the first place he's not in the chain of command? He wasn't in the chain of command. He was not only not in the chain of command, he was also demoted out of the small position of command that he had. Anyway, we're spending way, 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 way too much time ranting about this particular thing because I know that people were going to have... Uh, opinions on this but it, it is one of the biggest and worst worst written parts of this movie that i think was terrible uh i think the uh and not 
f has nothing to do with feminism. It has nothing to do with anything like that. It's just, it made no sense. Uh, Poe was basically a villain in this movie, and it was terrible. Um, uh, the stuff that was good, okay? I want to talk about the stuff that I really liked in this film. Um, basically, everything with Luke was really enjoyable. Especially Puppet Yoda. I actually really, really liked the fact that they brought back Puppet Yoda to have an emotional and intense and 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 plot relevant conversation with Luke. Um, it was great. It was, uh, and I liked Luke's arc. I know that a lot of people really, really hated Luke's arc. They were very angry about the fact that uh, that Luke like had a uh, a a loss of faith, but. I, I don't think that it, I don't think there was any other way it could have gone. Um, at the end of Star Wars The Force Awakens, um, Luke deliberately left to go hide away on a planet. He explicitly went out of his way to hide where he went. He did not want anyone to find him. So unless th they had basically two options ryan johnson as far as i could tell had two options for what to do with luke either luke burnt out and no longer and basically shut himself off to the jedi order and the force or luke was secretly pumping iron on a secret planet and it, and he was he was getting so powerful that nobody that he didn't want anybody to see him while he was pumping iron and getting super ripped. And obviously, that would have been even stupider than what actually happened uh, in this movie. So I think the Luke loss of faith arc was actually really fitting. And uh, also, I don't think that it contradicts Luke's character at all. Luke was a really good person, um, but he also had an abortive training he also was somewhat careless. He was also severely traumatized. And uh, he wasn't prepared to deal with a universe that was like post the rebellion. Um, so I think it actually made sense to have him have a loss of faith arc. And I think that it was, uh, it was done very well. Uh, everything that happened on Luke's planet was, was great. The conversations between him and Rey were good. They were, they built character for both of them. You got to see that uh, it was like one of the times we finally got some characterization for Rey, which was that you started to see that Rey is basically a sort of hopeless, hopelessly idealistic, but ultimately very good hearted individual um, that like, uh, uh, she actually shares a lot of personality with young Luke. Uh, she's willing to, you know, she goes down to the, to the dark side and confronts her dark side before she's ready, much like Luke does. Um, and, uh, and, but to, to a less destructive degree, she's actually like a, uh, in a lot of ways, she's portrayed in The Last Jedi as sort of Luke, but a little bit wiser maybe. And Luke has, he, he, he's jaded. He's not able to see the good in Rey as a as a learner until it's almost too late. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of things that I liked, uh, you know, uh, everything from Luke just totally being uh, like having shut himself off to the force entirely uh, to the scenes that were shot on his planet between uh, between him and Rey, and then of course the, sh the scenes between Rey and Kylo Ren, which occurred on that planet, which was sort of this struggle between you should come to the light side, no, you should come to the dark side, which was actually very compelling because um, we don't actually really see that in any, in, in, in the, the original trilogy, you it's never really you never believe that there's a possibility that uh, that Darth Vader will come uh, to the good to the light side, and you don't ever really believe that Luke has a real chance of going to the dark side. Um, but in this movie, you actually do you're given enough to believe. Wow, Kylo Ren could become a good guy, and Rey could actually break bad, and I like that a lot. I think they were really well done. I think that it was compelling and uh, also it looked awesome. The sets and the little creatures and the green nasty milk and uh, and Luke basically living a hermit lifestyle and 
echoing like a dark like a like a dark mirror version of Yoda where he's like grouchy and uh and and fallen Yoda I think is great. I thought it was awesome. It was good. Uh and yeah, it was it was the, that those portions of the movie are the best parts of the movie. Um nobody likes it because it's gross, but but gross is sometimes great, okay? It's just sometimes gross things are great. Um yeah. So it's pretty cool. Um and of course, like I said, the uh the 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 scene between Luke and the Force Ghost of Puppet Yoda is fantastic. It's great. It was uh I soy faced. I I I clapped. But I, I'm not kidding you. It actually was good. It was the type of nostalgia that I liked a lot. It was, it wasn't too overindulgent. It was a short scene where Yoda basically goes, "You idiot! How could you have become so blind? Open your eyes. The Jedi texts don't matter. It's not about that. It was never about the Jedi texts." Uh, it was never about destroying the Jedi texts. It was never about preserving the Jedi texts. It is about making sure that these young people have hope. It's about it's about passing on the light of hope into a universe that is being torn apart by war. And it's a great scene. I love it. I think it's great. And now... We have to talk about the other arcs in the story. And by that I mean the non-arcs that occurred, okay? This is the part that, there is so much of this movie that I felt was just very boring and also didn't end up going anywhere at all. Uh, I already tore apart Poe's whole arc. I thought Poe's thing was terrible. If they wanted to make more sense, Poe should have become a villain. Uh, and they should have just committed to basically Poe leaving the rebellion after getting a bunch of people killed. And then maybe in the third movie, they have a thing where they have to go hunt down Poe, like a reverse. You know what? Wow. Why don't you make it like a reverse of the, uh, of, of Han Solo? You know how in Return of the Jedi, they got to go rescue Han Solo because Luke's, uh, basically Luke's carelessness got Han Solo frozen into carbonite. Now make it so that Poe leaves and they got to go hunt him down. They, he's got information. And then they have a character arc where they maybe decide to forgive him because he actually grows as a person and realizes that he actually ca caused a lot of harm or something like that. Anything. But they don't. Sorry, no spoilies. Um, the... Uh... <sighs> Rose and Finn run around on a goofy, crappy-looking planet. Um, they go to, like, the ugliest casino planet you can imagine, and they ride around on cute, admittedly cute horses um, for no real reason. Uh, it feels very aimless. It, f it doesn't go anywhere. Literally nothing that they do does anything. They don't accomplish anything except getting more people killed. Uh, it makes no sense, and by the way, they never grow as a result of that. In the movie itself, and also, little spoilies for Rise of Skywalker, it's never resolved in Rise of Skywalker either. So you never, they never learn anything as a result of leaving, of defecting from the rebellion in a moment of need. None of them learn anything. They don't go anywhere. Their character, these these storylines, these story arcs don't go anywhere. It's just time, it's filler. They run around on a planet and then they return to the exact state of affairs that they were in before. They literally go back to the ships and the ships are still slowly running away from the Imperial ships. And it's actually almost hilarious. There are, I, I got mad at this while I was watching because there's like 20 shots, uh, in the in the movie 
that are almost identical. It's a shot of the back of the rebel ships running away from the Imperial ships and lasers going and they throw it in like not 20 times, realistically more like seven times. It's like, we get it. They're moving slowly away from the enemy ships. I get it. They're slowly moving away and it goes they show it so many times and it's just like, what's the What's the, why? Why would they do that? Who can't, like, uh, it's so stupid. It's so, it's so dumb. I don't care if they do a slow chase. A slow chase is fine, but they cut back to it so many times as if to remind you there are stakes, but there aren't any stakes. They weren't doing anything. Their their brave meth, their brave idea didn't do anything. It didn't do anything but get a couple people killed. And they never, they never, deal with that they never confront the fact that they got people killed they just kind of go whoops it didn't work out and leia goes pats them on the head and says next time maybe you should follow orders it feels like a bad like a bad line from the prequels in the prequels there's all these dumb throwaway lines uh, where where Obi-Wan Kenobi's like, Anakin, you, you, you need to learn to follow orders. But they're throwaway lines. It's a single line, not like an entire arc. The whole arc of Finn, Rose, Poe, uh, and all of them is... Uh, I don't get it. Made no sense to me. And then there's the whole Kylo thing. Um, the Kylo arc. I feel like Kylo got, like, uh, he got ripped off just a little bit. Silent says, but Rose's character arc was to realize that anyone can become a hero of the Resistance, which is supposed to strengthen the theme in Rey's arc that she doesn't have to be a member of some notable family, that she can just be Rey and to be a hero because of how she chooses to act. But Rose isn't a hero. They fail. So it doesn't even work. She doesn't become a hero. She becomes, she, she is, she becomes a hero because the camera fixates on her. Rose saves Finn's life. Okay, I'm trying to take this movie on the grounds of the movie itself, not what could have been, because we all know what actually happened anyway, and what could have been didn't happen, but who cares? Finn was a defector. Finn spent the whole movie fucking up and being a coward. They literally went backwards in his character for basically no reason. A failed heroic effort, it wasn't heroic, it was cowardly. It's just, I don't think it was well written. I know what they were trying to go for. I'm not saying that they weren't trying to go for that, but, uh, but yeah. The attack was caused by Poe Finn and Rose defecting. Yes, they all knowingly participate in a mutiny and they fail. So I, and I don't think, by the way, this is not me hating on any of the actors. I think all of the actors portrayed their characters very well. It's one of the things, I should be clear on that. I do think that this movie has very good uh, portrayals of all of the characters. It's just what they tried to do was did not come together, like basically at all. Defecting means they go to the other side. Can we call it deserting? Deserting, sorry, you're right. Defecting is is too far. We're not doing Rise of Skywalker. We're doing uh, The Last Jedi. Um, I, I just don't think that Ryan Johnson made it come together at all. Now, I think a lot of things were trying to be set up, and I can be charitable to that fact. I will do my best to be charitable to that fact that like they were clearly trying to set some things up, but I don't think they succeeded, and I don't know why. I can't explain why they made some of the decisions that they did. I have no idea why they chose to write the mutiny arc the way that they did. It was just, it just, none of it really made a whole lot of sense. Um, and Rose, like I said, Rose never really became a hero outside of the fact that you're supposed to believe she's a hero um, because the movie is telling you that. 
which I think is lazy writing, like very lazy writing. Um, and uh, Kylo Ren kind of got a little bit ripped off, just a tiny bit. Um, uh, I don't know how you can say Rose has no arc if you compare her first scene with Finn to her last scene with Finn. You can say it's not an interesting arc. I think Finn's ar arc ends up very unrewarding compared to the others. Um, I guess... Uh, I guess I just I don't know. Uh, I don't I don't know what's the heroic. She Rose is is par is is like attached to Finn because he's a hero of the of the rebellion. Not that he did like a single heroic act. Like uh. She goes. I don't know. I. I just. I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it came together. Like maybe if you want to interpret it as like her saying like, "Oh, I'm just a janitor. I can't do anything good." Then I guess you could say that she has an arc. But I don't really think that like, I don't really think that her choosing to try and save her personal friend is the same thing as what she was saying at the beginning of the movie. At the beginning of the movie, she was starstruck. She was starstruck about. Uh, she was starstruck about meeting a hero of the rebellion, um, not just somebody who is like generally brave. So I guess I can understand where uh, if you if you like do a little gimme, I guess, I, I guess. But I, I don't know. I don't think that I don't think that really. Something get meshed very well. I, and it's not compelling. It's not compelling on the screen. Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to say she gains self-confidence, um, sure. That's fine. She does gain some self-confidence. She gains enough self-confidence to fly a ship, to crash a ship into another ship, which is, sure. Uh, I just, I, I feel like, I feel like Poe and Finn and Rose uh, all kind of got the short end of the stick. Um, and it was not, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't amazingly compelling. I think what would have been cooler, uh, actually I'm trying to think, what could have been cooler? What would have been better? Um, hmm. How would you, how would you do this? Flaming Tricycle says, Poe did a mutiny in a desperate act because he was a soldier not being given orders, and he's desperate to make that reckless choices in the beginning something that wasn't in vain. He's a fanatic. His arc was learning that loss happens. That wasn't his arc. He was blind to loss. He was completely blind to loss. He didn't care about the loss. He All he saw was the achievement. He saw the achievement of blowing up a big ship because that's where his mind is. His mind is always in the cockpit. She literally says that. Rose's message needs to be we live for each other instead of die for a cause. Yeah, but that's very different. That's like sort of introduced at the end, but that's not like the start. Like, I don't think that her character, I don't think her character starts, be starts by believing that you should die for a cause at all, right? Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. I want to finish everything else I have to say about this. Um, the the side character arcs uh, are not very good. Uh, and also, they're pretty boring. Um, it's one of the things that really kind of drove me mad was I, I, I didn't... When I, first, uh, when I first saw TLJ... Uh, I remember thinking about all the Luke and Ray and Kylo stuff a lot and really liking that and on my and and that was what I was mostly thinking about on my second viewing I ended up uh uh, uh I I I uh I ended up b b zoning out like I was just I could it was so boring to watch the side stuff that like I realized in my first viewing I was more charitable to the film. Um, I mentioned this in my review of the Force, uh, the Force Awakens, which is that when I rewatched Force Awakens, I liked Force Awakens slightly more than I did the first time. And when I rewatched 
The Last Jedi, I liked The Last Jedi slightly less than I did the first time. Um, yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of that is because this time I was watching it with more of a clear mind to the side characters' plots. Um, the side characters' plots were just incredibly boring. Um, they were just uh, weird uh uh character like weird like un uh, sort of unbelievable tension and uh yeah um I just, eh. and uh however there were some things i did like um obviously the outfits uh the, the costuming was on point for this movie uh the 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 guards in the everybody always brings up the guards in Snoke's room uh Snoke's Snoke's throne room guards look sick the throne room looks really awesome the little the little nun aliens are really great even the porgs are fine i don't love the porgs but they're fine they're they're cute um Snoke does look pretty goofy, but that's just a problem with Snoke. Like, that's not just this movie. That's all, like, Snoke was a weird decision. Um, yeah, um, and, uh, uh, the fuck is a porg? Uh, porgs are these little, they're like these little birds. Snoke is weird and I don't know what they were I don't know what they were planning with Snoke. I don't think they were even doing anything. Um Dark Emperor Snoke. Um So uh uh it was I don't know, Snoke was weird. Regardless, um I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I was missing out. The fight, the fight. Everybody always talks about the fight in the throne room. Oh, it's the coolest fight ever. Oh, it's the, it's so awesome. It's the coolest fight ever. It was pretty cool. I gotta, I gotta be honest. I do think that the throne room fight is pretty cool. It's very video gamey. Um, uh, it's very video gamey, but it is cool. It's cool video gamey. It, it has a lot of, um, it looks great, like the 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 flashing and the sparks and the the stuff falling down. It's pretty great. Uh, it's. I know that some people have problems with the like the sort of Power Rangers esque choreography where there's like only two guys ever engaging at once, but it's not that bad. I've I've watched it. I, I specifically watched for that. I wanted to just watch it with fresh eyes and see how bad it is. And there's really only like one shot where that's true. It really isn't that, um, it really wasn't that big of a deal. The, the, the overall fight is pretty cool. And also it's really great to see the, 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 the Sith Jedi characters, the, uh, all white, Ray with her her blue lightsaber and an all black uh, uh, Kylo with his red lightsaber fighting the crazy in this crazy room. It's very aesthetic. It has a good. It's cool. It's great. I like it. It's a good scene. I don't agree that it's the best lightsaber fight in the entire series. I think that's silly. Uh, I think the best lightsaber fight in the series still goes to Return of the Jedi. Um, the fight between Luke and Darth Vader, which has the most, uh, uh, the most, uh, emotional stakes. It has the most, uh, you know, relevant choreography. I think that's still the best one in the series, uh, by a pretty long shot. But I do think that the aesthetic is on point and it's very fun. Also, I want to point out, I really like the scene. I really like the scene between... Where they're where where Kylo is holding out his hand, and he's like, "You could join me. You should join me." And it's like very it's it's very tense. There's this thing where they're that 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 recurring uh, attempt of them to convert each other to to each other's point of view um, is continuing, and because Kylo uh, activates the lightsaber to cut Snoke in half. Uh, you actually believe, oh my god, 
is Kylo going to actually defect? Is he going to become a good guy? Are we going to get good guy Kylo? And of course he doesn't, which is a, a little bit odd, but, but it's cool that you can believe it for a second. And then you see him kind of like phase back over to his dark side ways. It was good. It's a little bit short, but it's a cool, it's nice. It's a nice feeling to be able to be like, oh wait, he might actually do this. Um, and it's, and he sells it. Obviously Adam Driver is a god. He's like a really good actor and he sells the, he sells the character very well. Um, and also after that, the battle on Crate, um, which is also just aesthetically awesome. Um, the planet of Crate looks awesome. All of the, the, the like customized walkers and the, the swarming TIE fighters, um, it's not nearly as good as uh, as the Hoth. It wanted to be Hoth. It's very clear that it really wanted to be Hoth. However, it was no Hoth. Hoth had this great trench combat tension that was not present on, on crate barely at all and part of that is because you're spending so there's so much time spent focusing on finn and rose and the weird super drill it would have been way better if it was trench combat and it just got horrible horrible stalemate until uh luke and and ray arrive um however however it looked cool the the red salt was really awesome the base was imposing had a helm's deep kind of feel to it the giant door with the dingy dark cave inside the the the, the like incredible contrast between the dark horrible conditions inside the fortress and the the huge blasted planes outside uh, and I love the little vehicles that, that draw the smoke so that they can get closer. I would have loved to see them actually show that, like show the ships used to, to pull smoke up so that the, the rebels can run forward to a position, you know what I mean? And, or, or retreat to a position. That would have been great. They didn't really show that. Uh, it just was kind of implied. Uh, but it would have been really cool if they did that. Um, but overall, the the battle looked very nice. It had a very uh, iconic appearance that I that I quite enjoyed. Yes, exactly. Posadas John says, add more of the salty Hoth battle and remove basically all of the casino and stupid mutiny plot. Literally, can you imagine if they got rid of the casino mutiny plot and instead the latter like third of the movie was just a grueling uh, holdout in the trenches and all of the characters had to survive in the trenches and bond and deal with their shit and think about how their lives are going to end in the trenches and whether or not they actually still have hope or not. That would have been way better. So much better. It could have been, oh, awesome. Could have been great. That'd be awful. I don't think it would have been awful. I think that would have been better. Um, I think it would have been, I think it would have been way, way, way better. Um, and then of course there's the very silly, uh, uh, the very, very silly, um, uh, nobody's ever really gone. Uh, the, the, the weird hyper sappy conversations between forced ghost Luke. Okay. Here's a hot take. Most of the forced ghost Luke stuff was really dumb. Uh, the, di the dice, the dice was so goofy. Um, however, uh, uh, however, I actually liked the, the, the scene where they're blasting the shit out of Luke's force ghost. Um, the Luke force ghost where he's like, uh, he's standing there and then you have Kylo Ren going absolutely batshit. He's just like, kill him, kill him, blast him, more. That was awesome. It was, that was, it was, yeah, it was so much fun. It was so hammy and, and it was that bratty Kylo Ren that we get again. Ah, it's so good. You get the tension between Hux and, and the deranged religious psychopath that is Kylo Ren. Unfortunately, most of the Force Ghost Luke stuff just felt weird and it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. 
to me after everything that happened i know that it was a way of it was it was a way of showing that luke changed his mind but it was kind of a silly way of showing that he changed his mind right why wouldn't they just have him take the x-wing they show the x-wing in the water and tiny spoilers he he takes the x-wing out of the water in the next film anyway why didn't he just physically fly there and show that he's returned give him a few scenes bonding with the characters showing that his heart is back in the rebellion inspiring some of that hope again and then have him actually die instead of just dying as a ghost and then dying alone on the planet in a weird uh, melodramatic fadeaway scene. It just, you could have, you know what would have been great? It would have, you know, it would have even made more sense because if Kylo Ren cut Luke in half and he turned into a, a cloak just like Obi-Wan had, it would have perfectly echoed Obi-Wan failing Anakin, Luke failing Rot Kylo, and having a moment of redemption. How's he gonna get there in time? Uh, this is this is post post prequel Star Wars. Time doesn't matter at all. There is no time. Like in none of these movies, they have never brought back the, the, the concept of travel time. Travel time disappeared in Phantom Menace and never, ever came back. Just ne he never came back. It was gone. Time sucks? No, time is great, but Star Wars, disc they got rid of the concept of, of time. Star Wars literally threw it out. In, 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 in Return of the, no wait, what's it? In Revenge of the Sith, Padme has a pregnancy that advances over five days and they teleport across the galaxy instantaneously multiple times. It's stupid, so who cares? Whatever they needed to do, they should have figured out a way to make it so that it wasn't a forced ghost and that he didn't just kind of disappear all by himself because the 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 anger from that angry scene was great, but was it worth the weird like forced ghost walking around and having dialogue conversation? I don't know, I, it was very weird and the, the, the dice was weird and didn't make a whole lot of sense and the dice got left behind anyway. Uh, I just... And then the ending, oh, that's the ending. And then that's the end of the film. Um, <sighs> there was a lot to dislike about this movie. And there were some things to like about it. Yes, exactly. Oh, Posadas John says, if they had decided instead to go with a drawn out battle like reverse Hoth, then there would have been enough time. Exactly. Precisely. I think the dice were also an illusion, were they? Wasn't the dice created for Solo? I have no idea. I think it makes more sense for Luke to not put himself in a position where Kylo directly murders him because I think he still wants Kylo to be redeemed. He doesn't want him to fall so far. But that doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean, but that doesn't make any sense. He gets blasted into the ground. Kylo functionally murders him anyway. So that doesn't, that doesn't, like he literally, bla he thinks that's the actual Luke and he blasts him into the ground like with a hundred lasers and is screaming more, more, more. So like, huh? why not just, if you're gonna do that anyway, if you're going to have it be that Kylo is overcome by his anger, just have Luke go in person. Oh, they disappear when Kylo picks them up. And he forces Kylo to see how little that sort of weaponry matters to a Jedi. Wouldn't that also be true? if Kylo sliced him with a lightsaber, and then he said, destroying me will only make me stronger, just like Obi-Wan did, and then he disappears, 
and it turns out that in the third movie, uh, Kylo Kylo Ren is thwarted because, as it turns out, killing Luke didn't matter. It was just a, a way to buy time. It would have been like poetry. It would have rhymed. Luke being there physically would have just led to dumb fan service shit, but there was already dumb fan service shit. shit. And anyway, the effect was the same. The weaponry still kills Luke anyway by the exertion that Luke had to project himself there. So, I just, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, Luke versus Kylo lightsaber fight where Luke doesn't strike at all and instead just buys time for people to escape or something would have been way better. Would have been way better. Plus it would have given us time to like see Kylo lose his shit more in a more up close way. Um, yeah, so, uh, the soy factor of The Last Jedi was much lower. There was much less uh, weird soy facing nostalgia baiting. It was way, way less uh, of that. However, the writing was not better. The writing was um, arguably worse even than The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens wasn't well written, but it wasn't bad either. It was just kind of like too fixated on the old characters. Um, it was just, I just, there was a lot of decisions that really made this. And I will say, uh, I was way more bored watching The Last Jedi than I was watching The Force Awakens on just a pure popcorn eating, like mouth breathing, oh, cool lasers. The, 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 the Force Awakens is way more exciting and cool and interesting than The Last Jedi with the stupid casino planet and them running around in hallways doing nothing. I just, yeah, so. Um, anyway, uh, The Last Jedi, uh, a very complicated movie. And uh, while I do believe that it would have actually been possible for this movie to go somewhere. For example, I actually do think, I wanna be 100%, I wanna be as fair to this movie as I can. I think that if they had followed a couple of the themes that were set up in this film, specifically with Rey, Kylo, and Luke Skywalker, that the that they could have actually had a compelling third movie. If they decided to go, actually, the old ways of the Jedi uh, don't matter. What matters instead is that the Jedi can represent hope against the Empire. They can represent, uh, and also, if they decided to go, your background, um, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't matter. Your family name doesn't matter. Your ability to access the force is a matter of personal refinement, of discipline, of introspection, of mastering yourself. That could have been really cool. That would have been really cool. And guess what? <laughs> you want to know what game does that? Star Wars. Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. That's right. Those games are actually very much about um, moving beyond the, the Jedi teachings and learning to understand what was actually important about the Jedi for all these people in the first place. It does actually, yes. Uh, silent. It's actually was I was pretty surprised. Um, but yeah, uh, oh yeah, people mentioned that I didn't mention the Holdo maneuver and that's because I didn't really care. Uh, the Holdo maneuver thing was really, I was completely uh, ambivalent towards it. I don't think it, I don't know, I just, it didn't, it was okay. Uh, she did a cool move. Um, it was a character that was introduced in this movie and then um, at least acknowledge the filmmaking part of that part? What do you mean? Like that the special effect looked good? I do think the special effect was relatively good looking. Um, but it looked fine. But the problem was it was immediately afterwards 
Wasn't it immediately afterwards followed up by the, uh... No, wait, that was before. The, the, uh, the, the, the flying Leia. It was a cool... It wasn't a shot. I mean, it is a shot, but it's, it's not a film shot. It wasn't made with, like, miniatures. It was a, a special... It was a special effect. And it looked all right. I thought it was cool, I guess. It's just it wasn't... It didn't have that much impact. Because, I don't know... Nobody, it didn't, it just didn't, it didn't really, I don't know, it didn't really do all that much. Um, and because immediately after the Holdo maneuver, they go down to the planet and have a big final battle. So like, they tell you again, they're telling you it did something, and it kind of did, but like, maybe the Holdo maneuver should have been something at the end. Like, okay, hold on. Here we go. This is my last thing before we move on to other things, okay? Um, maybe you should have had Hoth 2, long protracted battle on Crate, and they're like, oh my god, we actually can't escape. It's a do or die situation. No one is answering our call. That was a big part, was that nobody was coming to answer the call, and they were, people were losing hope. And so they say, listen, there's only one way that we can escape from Crate. Everybody has to pile on to one of these two uh, uh, vessels, okay? We're gonna put everybody, all of the survivors, on the first vessel. And then the second vessel, we're gonna put Holdo on there, and she's gonna sacrifice herself by doing the Holdo maneuver to distract so the second vessel can get away and everybody can escape. Um. That would have been cooler. It's just that in the the way that it was in the movie, the Holdo maneuver happens, and then they immediately go into the, the conclusion of the film, which is this big exciting battle. So that you don't even there's just it doesn't it's not it, uh, it's not that it's not that exciting. It doesn't do that much. It's like, okay, she sacrificed herself. Now they're going to have a final battle. So Yeah. It only allowed Finn and Rose to get off the ship? Yeah, basically. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, the Last Jedi was a big mixed bag. Um, it really made me shrug my shoulders. I felt about it very similarly to the way that I felt about The Force Awakens, which is... Okay. It was a movie. Uh, it wasn't very compelling. There was basically no actual internal politics to the film, um, which was a problem with The Force Awakens as well, that these films are like p politically sterile. They like actively avoid having any like political commentary on the universe of Star Wars, um, which is my favorite part of Star Wars. I like it when Star Wars gets political. I like it when Star Wars, uh, uh, um, yeah, I like it when Star Wars is willing to talk about politics. It's, 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 it was the only saving grace of the prequel trilogy. Um, it did feel like a setup for stories to come, and I do feel like they could have done a lot more, especially, by the way, with the ending shot. Everybody knows the ending shot of the kid using the Force powers to pick up the, um, the shit brush, the shit mop. He's like, you know, he's, he's standing in the, uh, He's standing in the in the dirty uh, thing, and he goes and picks up the mop to clean out the stable. And uh, you're like, "Wow! Oh my God! Even the stable boy can be uh, can have a force power." But as we know, there was no follow up. So uh, a a setup with no follow up can only be judged on how effective and entertaining it was on its own. And it wasn't very entertaining. And it didn't really have that much to say. Uh, and they wasted the talent of a bunch of really, really talented actors. Because that is, again, I will say it one more time. I said it, I think, three times throughout this review. The acting was fantastic. There was not a single bad performance in that whole movie. Every single actor put their all into it. And it showed. But to what? To what end? There wasn't a coherent goal or a coherent message. And the few themes that were solidly delivered were 
not well we we have to wait to talk about rise of skywalker don't we uh yeah anyway that's the last jedi that's my long-winded review of the last jedi i hope you enjoyed it uh if you had fun listening to me rant about the last jedi and get mad and get happy and all of the different things that i brought up make sure that you press that subscribe button right down below and ring the bell it takes two seconds and of course leave me a comment with your thoughts i would love to hear your thoughts uh about the star wars movie and where you excuse me where you think i'm wrong where you think i'm maybe right uh, where you think I got a detail wrong, uh, if you want to tell me about how actually uh, the polished voodoo hide uh, would have deflected a laser cannon more effectively, uh, then you can do that in the comments. Anyway, thank you very, very much. Much love. All right, there we go, everybody. Rise of Skywalker is going to be next stream. Rise of Skywalker is next next stream. And boy, oh boy, is that one going to be a fun one. I'm excited to do Rise of Skywalker. I'm super excited because I don't have to play nice even a little bit. There's, uh, you know what? We'll get there. I play nice with Force Awakens and with and with uh, The Last Jedi because you know what? There's actually some enjoyable stuff. There's things to be nice about. And just remember, everybody, no one's ever really gone. What if we form a Ryan Johnson cult and force Disney to release the Johnson cut of Rise of Skywalker? Uh, Rise of Skywalker is an unsalvageable film. Um, it would have to... Uh, the TLJ slander is over. Name... Oh, oh, no, no, you know what? Name one thing. Name one thing I slandered. Hit me with it. Tell me what I slandered. Do it. You guys, you know what we haven't had? We haven't had uh, a nerd emoji uh, art. Well, we had some, but but uh, I want I want to hear what I slandered. What did I slander? I don't think I slandered shit. I think it's weird to call Poe a traitor. Poe's a traitor. Poe is an a he's actually a traitor. Unironically, he does a mutiny. He absolutely is a traitor. No, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's a traitor in the film. I, I think it was stupid to write him that way, but he is unequivocally, no questions asked, a traitor. I didn't say CGI can't be filmmaking. CGI can be filmmaking. I do think given the info they were working on, it was reasonable to try something, even if it was a complete shit show. Uh... No. Uh, yes and no. If he wanted to try something, it should have been something different. Even still, he's still a traitor. They were told nothing about the plan? He was told nothing about the plan because he just got demoted for being a dumbass. So... And, and, yeah. Poe should have followed orders and listened to his superior instead of feeding his hero complex? No, 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 here's the thing. You can write a story where he's, he's vindicated for not listening to his superiors. They're the rebels, after all. Um, in fact, this exists. It exists in a movie called Rogue One. That's right, Rogue One. Uh, in Rogue One, a large group of, uh, of rebels decide to disobey the orders of the rebel council because they believe that getting the plans to the Death Star is more important than political uh, than political wagering among the alliance, the rebel alliance council. And uh, uh, and in that movie, it is fully fleshed out that the people who engage in that are doing so out of a sense of what is right and what is wrong, and that not they're not just they're not just a salty uh, they're not just salty that they got demoted, um, and and 
acting grossly out of line. Poe just doesn't like Admiral Holdo. He just shits on Admiral Holdo and then does a mutiny that endangers more people than Admiral Holdo. I agree that it's bad writing, but what he does is supremely selfish. And you can compare that to the actions of Jyn Erso and, uh, and Cassian Andor in Rogue One. In Rogue One, they take they make a decision that is that is personal with people and they actually there's actually a scene that's filmed of them saying guys you know that this is going to make get us in a lot of trouble you guys know that this is going to go bad they don't kill anybody they don't do they don't threaten anybody with guns they're not turning on their own allies they just disobey orders because and they're right they're actually correct because they're rebels what have we seen that makes us actually trust or believe the capabilities of Holdo? We? The viewers? Po- wait, hold on. I'm gonna be, uh... I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be in- the, I'm gonna step into the language of the film. Holdo is Leia's personal friend who Leia handpicks to be her successor. Leia, who is venerated in this series as basically a god. Le Leia is an unassailably good person. There is literally no reason in the text of the movies that we should distrust Leia. Le not even in the way like in the prequels where you're supposed to distrust the Jedi Order. Like in the prequel movies, the Jedis are the good guys, but there's a tongue-in-cheek thing going on because Lucas is also criticizing the existence of the Jedi Order and writing a story about how the Jedi are actually kind of full of themselves. That's not what's happening here. Leia is an unassailably good character. She is a heroic, almost godlike character in this universe who never betrays. She doesn't even punish Poe outside of demoting him. She actually just goes, hey, that was wrong of you. I have to demote you. And she doesn't like, like, throw him in the brig or kick him out or anything. She just says, you're no longer in command. I have to take you out of a position of command. Holdo is her personal friend and her hand-picked successor who she deliberately puts into. And we see her working with Holdo on various plans. Poe is just an idiot in this film. Also, even in the movie, even in the movie, uh, the entire bridge, minus that one person, minus that one girl, uh, all are on board with Holdo and are clearly in the loop. When they do the mutiny, they arrest all of the people who are clearly aware of what Holdo's plan actually was. I do agree with Lefty McLefterson in, in YouTube chat says Poe is the true victim of The Last Jedi's writing. Uh, honestly, well, wait, nobody's arguing for blind authority. Nobody, that is not what's going on in that movie. I mean, it is kind of stupidly written, but it's not, it's not blind authority, but yeah. Um, but yes, Lefty McLefterson says, uh, yeah, the Poe is the real victim of The Last Jedi's writing, and it is true. Uh, Poe and Finn, especially, are the greatest victims of The Last Jedi's writing. Poe and Finn got done mega dirty. Finn is... Finn deserved to be, uh, like, the second most important character, if not the most important character in the entirety of that, of that, that three-movie se sequel arc. F Finn had so much potential. John Boyega is such a good actor. The Finn character was so enjoyable, and they just, they did him so dirty. Oh, they did him so fucking dirty.